We are seriously moving and grooving today, guys. By not only making a record amount of machines, but also we figure out the master layout for our factory. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time, we got all these doggos! And we're technically just farming them for uh, power slugs and stuff. But you know, it's nice to have them around and we built them this really cute little doggo playground. With houses and toys and bridges, oh my! And then aside from messing with these little rascals, we did a ton of decorating mainly just with painting the piece, so everything's now a wonderful red, and we went over some of the things that I've been working on in the live streams. Like this huge structure over here, the new cement factory, way over there, and a whole lot more. But today, we are strictly going to be processing. We have so much to do. And mainly it all comes down to automating heavy modular frames. We need these. We needed them yesterday, and now we're gonna get them. So we made a ton of encased industrial beams, we have a massive supply of steel pipes, and we have the new concrete factory. So most things are fine, done, dealt with. Except for that one thing, the modular frames. And they're not too bad to make. All we have to do is copy over our breakpoint processing system, uh, just a couple times, and boom, we should have them. Because really, all we need is a little bit of iron, because we already have all the steel pipes. But then here's the problem. We don't have a little bit of iron. Because all of the iron that we do have is being used by our starter base, and I don't really want to dive into that supply, just in case things go wrong at the new base. So we gotta use a different source. And luckily, I have the other sources all figured out already. So I went around while looking for doggos and doing other stuff, and I went and found a bunch of iron nodes. Pretty much all of the iron nodes that are in this area. So there's four pure ones up here by the concrete factory. There's a bunch of normal nodes over here in the desert starting location. And then there's just some dabbled out and around. Uh, that's coal, yeah. Yeah, iron pure, iron pure. And then some like limestone as well. That we'll be probably picking up too. But pretty much for the first couple hours here, I am just gonna be spamming up world eater factories. We're gonna have smelters and constructors for days. And for those unaware, the World Eater factories just are for smelters and constructors, so I don't have to build them all at the main base in this Let's Play. We make a design, we copy it a couple times, and it's done. Resources are dealt with, we throw them on the belt, and everything eventually goes back into the Cortex, i.e. our warehousing area. So without further ado, I think we'll get these four pure nodes first, and move on from here. We're gonna try and get like, way more iron than we actually need. Because really, we're always gonna be needing more iron. So we may as well get a bunch now. But yeah, that's about 3,120 iron once we have the Mark III miners here. So that's pretty good. And like I said, it's pretty easy to make these guys. It's really just the repetitive belt work that takes a bit of time. But even still, that's fine. Well, except for belting it back to base. Belting everything back to base? Oh lordy lordy. That takes a spicy minute. That's okay, because it's done too. And then, do 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 I've already started processing the desert area as well. And the design's just a little different due to the normal purity of the nodes. But it all works out the same. Just rows and rows and rows copy and pasted, and then sending the iron ingots for export. And because of the huge volume here, he even had to make an entire new belt highway back to base for this. So we should be good for a while now. Because all in, I think now we have somewhere in the range of six to 7,000 iron ingots being processed and sent to base. The only problem that's kind of sneaking up on us is in the cortex here, where all the iron is getting transported to bins like we did with all of the other materials. And things are getting a little spicy. Little tiny bit spicy. We're keeping it managed for now. Hopefully it doesn't get more complicated than this. Oh wait a second, of course it will! We only have iron ingots here! Oh. Oh, we're gonna have to build like thousands of constructors now! Oh gosh. Oh goodness, oh goodness gracious. Uh huh. Well what- oh god. Oh no no no! Oh there's layers to this! 
because we're gonna have to have a massive constructor area just for wire because late game we just need literally tens of thousands of it iron plates are another obvious problem and then iron rods too oh yeah this is gonna be a big oof oh gosh I guess I should have technically built all the constructors out in the world eater areas but I guess having all of the iron ingots here is okay because we can like add a little bit more bulk to the base because right now it kind of still looks like a shanty town like we haven't finished off a lot of design and this will add like a core to it in a way and looking around I think where we want to build like thousands of constructors is on the other side of the river here because we have the most amount of space and we can expand as far as we want pretty much into this like what direction is this the east yeah easternly direction and so now if we want to build over there I think we're gonna even build another travel pipe to that side of the factory because like if our main hubs here and all of their stuff's over there yeah we're gonna be moving and grooving through this place a lot and not only that but we have our main like spine here too oh yeah this is gonna be hyper valuable and oh my gosh I just thought of this now but this is genius if we have all of the constructors over there and all of the assemblers on this side then like higher up they can all combine together very easily in like a manufacturer area okay so this like ties the whole thing together very well cool small problem though is that we'd have to transport a lot of raw resources across this river area and I don't want to build across the river area because it's cool to look down on and we'll be building bridges all over the place so we can look down on it logically then I guess the best idea would actually be to move the assemblers across the river uh-huh it makes a lot more sense because the constructors will obviously need a lot more from the warehousing area and full-on beast design wise like once everything is built up super high there's just gonna be this one giant pillar of constructors going up into like space it's gonna be insanely tall because of how many constructors we have to make and would that look good probably because then it would kind of be like the main anchor point for the base so if we're doing that let's consider how we lay it out so this entire platform where we have the assemblers right now is about 34 tiles across so if we had like a group of 16 and another group of 16 with a two wide gap in the middle that would look pretty good I wonder then how many constructors we're gonna be able to build per floor Oh, and a bit of bad news here but with this first floor it looks like we have 28 constructors which is good like this would work well if we're making uh, what are the few iron things we need to make we need to make iron rods iron plates and wire okay so that's kind of our problem this design will work with the iron plates for sure and definitely with the iron rods but when we're making iron wire each of these constructors will make 67.5 wire per minute and 14 times 67.5 equals like 945 meaning we couldn't fit all of the wire onto one very easy to use 780 belt but you know I guess once we're making iron wire we can just switch up the whole design of the constructors at that point and just use this design for the simple stuff right now we just gotta keep focused on the one main goal and worry about future problems in the future <laughs> sorry future kibitz Wait, 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 wait. No, nope, 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 nope. That would have been a terrible idea. No. Whenever you can imagine yourself regretting your decisions, it's probably a bad decision. So I just spent like about 10 extra minutes and found a actually good design. That'll work for everything. It's much more modular, uses a lot less space, and it uses two less constructors, but I think that's still a good thing. So we have modules of eight. So we have, yeah, eight here, eight here, and eight here. But yeah, with the groups of eight, all the outputs will go through the center lane here. We can use the eventual wall that may be placed here to bring belts up and down and moving all around. And then there's a two wide area over this way that can be used for exporting stuff back into the storage area. If we bring things to the storage area, I'm not sure yet. But yeah, seems like a pretty good idea. And I'm honestly feeling pretty confident with this. So we're gonna copy and paste it probably like six times, eight times? Maybe. How tall is that now? Oh, just a little tall. 
but then let's tighten everything up so it's all nice and even so when we go to build walls we're good there and let it rip so that's like 1200 buildings that's a lot of clicking saved man but there's still oh so much clicking to do because all these bins here will eventually be iron and probably going into this section so yeah <laughs> that will be a that'll be a bit of spaghetti oh hold up wait not all of these bins though will go into constructors we're gonna have a lot of other materials too Ooh, like the pipes Ooh, Ooh, we caught something big here guys we caught something huge we're gonna need a bridge that brings the stuff from the warehouse over across the water now because we want to have our assemblers over there oh dude Oh, dude, hold up. I, you know what? Why don't we just bring that bridge through here? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so I guess down at like this point-ish, we'll just have the bridge. Uh, maybe it'll be like three wide. I guess it can be this entire floor wide. I don't really know. I guess we'll leave that for later. But after that's all complete, we'll move across the river here, start building the assemblers, and make the modular frames. That's it. Sounds good. Oh, but wait, before we get started on that, don't think I forgot about the doggos here. And you guys left like a million name suggestions for them. So, yeah, got all the names ready now. And there's 14 doggos. So we're gonna have Puffy, Peter, Bingo, Shrimp, Fanry, Muffin, Sith, Lizzie, Laz, Larry, Keo, Kieber, Rudy, and LL Drool J. And that's gonna be our squad. So thank you guys for all the name suggestions and doggos. Also, here is a muffin. There you guys go. You guys also mentioned that I should probably leave them some food, and yeah, that's probably a good idea. Maybe a couple muffins. More than one? Yeah, two whole muffins. That'll feed you guys forever, right? Of course. And yeah, while I work on this big ol' time-consuming project, I'll keep on farming power shards as I do, and hopefully by the time we're done, we'll have like an extra 100 power shards. Or maybe like a whole extra one. Maybe just a whole extra one? Just one? One? Really? Doggos? Okay, well, maybe a whole extra one. <laughs> okay, well, I can safely say that I definitely got more than one power slug. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this took a lot longer than I thought. Doing the belt work? Huh, a spicy bit of time. A spicy bit of time, but oh, man oh man. Does it look fantastic. Look at how clean things look. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Not bad, not bad. Especially considering this is gonna be like the messiest part of my factory. And man, speaking of, check out this little in-between area. So I've been leaving this gap open so we could look down at the travel pipe, because I thought it would be a cool view. And yeah, it's gonna be amazingly cool. We have all these belts going everywhere, we're gonna have iron being inputted, exports over on this side. It's just gonna be stuff moving and grooving all over the place, and then imagine when we're like a hundred feet up. Wait a second. Why imagine it when we can literally just go 100 feet up? But yeah, looking down on this looks amazing. This is kind of why I built the lookout tower here. Because I always knew looking down here, it's going to be like one of the coolest parts of the factory. We're going to have to mix up the design a little bit eventually, so it's not like boring. But overall, it's already looking pretty good. Oh, and man, I am really happy I redesigned things here. Because after looking at the heavy modular frame recipe again, we needed both wire and iron plates for this project. So if we'd went with the initial design, we would have been screwed really bad. But with this layout, everything worked out fine. And all of the wire will end up going down over this way. And like I said, to this exit kind of wall. And then yeah, we're gonna bring everything to the warehouse too. Because once we actually expand this thing properly, oh, we're gonna need a warehouse worth of space for all of the stuff we make here. But for now, I'd say we're good. All we have to do is hook up the final belts, and we rock and roll. Well, at least we start producing stuff. Then we have to restore all of the wire and the iron plates and all that jazz. 
and then bring it over across the river to our assembly area, which we will do next. But first off, after connecting all these lines, this is like my favorite part of Satisfactory. And that's just seeing a bunch of full lines moving and grooving into production machines, and it's just, oh, looks wild. Like, look at this. Oh yeah, but now that's satisfactory. Of course, we're using the breakpoint method here, so machines will overflow in like two seconds, but for now, it's pretty neat. As for the next step though, we are going to be expanding the warehouse. And I think what we're gonna do is we're going to copy like this floor, just as like an organization floor, and then a bin floor. So it's this kind of design just stacked up on top of itself. And there we'll have like all of the, you know, wire and the iron plates and things that are made in constructors. And then this first warehousing floor will be mainly focused on like raw resources, like quartz crystals or stuff like that. And yeah, it should only take another second since we're just gonna fill things in. Like boop and boop. 664 buildings in a second. Oh man, I love area actions. Now if only we could copy and paste belting, then we'd be set. But hey, maybe one day. At least for now though, we have all of the iron plates in place. Uh, we only have two storage containers of them. Soon we'll fill up half of these with iron plates and the other half with iron rods. And that should be good on those two fronts. And then this entire row here is all going to be wire. All of it. And we'll easily be able to fill all these bins too. Like, we've only secured the iron from this one biome over here. There's still the desert. There's still the, I don't know what this area is called. The green starter location? I don't know. Anyway, there's still this whole area. There's still so much iron on the map. We've only just begun. But we have a good amount to work with right now at least. Uh, next up is bringing it across the bridge. This bridge is going to be kind of like the anchor. The main support for the entire base. Because down here, trains all over the place. And this will kind of link up the huge building on this side and the huge building on, well, buildings on the other side. Yeah. So we'll have to make some kind of really cool design on here. We'll do a bunch of crazy stuff with it, I'm sure. But for now, it's very plain. And then it goes to another very plain rectangle, which is gonna act as another warehousing floor. And then up above, we're gonna start making more assemblers. And we can just quickly use the base design we made with the encased industrial beams. It's just gonna be a matter of transporting everything over. Hence why I wish we could use the Area Actions mod to copy belts. And honestly, if we could, that would have saved me like, mm, I would estimate like six hours on this episode? Yeah. Cause we like extended this belt highway, we did all the belting for a whole new storage room, and now this, oh man, it's been a wild one. But at least now we're closing in on the win, brother. However though, I think this is about as close as we're gonna get today, because yeah, I am like 99% sure this is like a record-breaking episode for how many machines we've belted up today. Like I want to say it's somewhere in the range of like four to five hundred different machines. And sure we're able to copy and paste a lot of stuff, but oof, these weaves take their sweet merry time, let me tell you. But we did make it to a fantastic spot here. We just used the same design as the encased industrial beams and we flipped it so we have, I think it's 30 per side? Yeah, and all of these uh, assemblers are making the stitched iron plates, uh, which is just an alternate recipe for the reinforced plates. Same thing, called something different. It all works out in the end. And then like I said, underneath, everything kind of belts to where it needs to be. And later on, when we stack on more assemblers, this area will get filled with more and more and more conveyor lifts. And it's gonna look like the beast, except, you know, super massive. For now though, we enjoy our humble beginnings as we just make a couple plates here. And very soon, we'll be getting those heavy modular frames. But that will most certainly be next time, because I am pooped, brother. But since we're so busy, we managed to get a ton of power slugs, so at least that's good. But anyway, that's gonna be all for today. So if you guys enjoyed, remember to leave a like, and I'll see you in the next episode. So have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs>